Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. Pebble Beach, California, United States of America. Class and sophistication. Timeless Art Deco masterpieces. Some of the world's nicest real estate. This is Pebble Beach. Concourse de Elegance 2018. It's a car collector's dream to compete at the Pebble Beach Concourse de Elegance. Perhaps it's because of the famed 18th fairway of Pebble Beach Golf Links morphing itself as the stage to the rolling Pacific Ocean serving as a backdrop. Incepted in 1950, this concourse is the top ranking collector car competition in the world. Hardly any pressure to whom decides to enter. This event is modelled on the early European concours that showcased new cars. But in 1955, the Pebble Beach concourse shifted its focus to collector cars. This five-star, unsurpassed epitome of dripping chrome has also taken the lead by including racing greats and offering featured marks and special classes as early as 1953. And this episode would have to run non-stop for a week to mention all. This event fuels the internal passion and interests of enthusiasts from all over the world. The Concourse de Elegance continues to set the bar for others. This is not a contest of speed, but one of elegance, one of art. Automobiles are judged for their style and technical merit, as well as their history, their originality, and the accuracy of their preservation or restoration. This is Pebble Beach. This is education. Out here on the green, and this is not the time to swing the iron. The only iron permissible around here at the moment is the prestigious four-wheel variety. Participants in the Pebble Beach Concourse de Elegance include many of the wealthiest and most powerful people in the world. People whose names routinely appear in the pages of Forbes and Fortune magazines, the Financial Times, the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. Moving on through the 2018 Concourse de Elegance, and this gentleman here, well, he needs no introduction. Jay Leno, how are you doing? Right, well, but you introduced me, but I didn't need one, apparently. So, uh, yeah, good to see you, good to see you. Welcome. Is this your first time at this event? It is at Pebble Beach, many, many times to the United right. States, Jay. Right. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's quite an event. I mean, it's, uh, the weather's always perfect, it's never hot here, and it's just, you just see cars here that you've never... You don't see anywhere. This is about education. There's brands of cars here I haven't even heard of. Well, do you know about this one, the Mercer, the race about? Uh, Mercer was uh, built in Trenton, New Jersey. It was built by the Roeblings, who built the Brooklyn Bridge. And this was, I, I consider, America's first true sports car. Because it was the first car uh, prior to this, or during this period, People would usually take the biggest engine they could find yep. and put it in a car. Yes. So consequently, you had these 11-liter, 12-liter, 13-liter monsters that would go down the straights terribly fast, but then start plowing in the corners because they had all the weight up front. Yep. Mercer was the first one to have a light car with a small engine and a light chassis. This is only about 300 cubic inches, which is pretty good size by modern standards. But by then, it was back yep. in the day, it was considered quite small. Jay, where did where did you obtain your knowledge on so many cars? I mean, your lateral thinking. I mean, you'll, you'll admire something like this and not only admire it, but know about it right through to a seven-horsepower Hellcat. Well, I, I think, you know, I think, like most people, you start out with the cars that impress you as a teenager. I grew up in the 60s, so you like the muscle cars. Then you say to yourself, 
Well, what came before the muscle car? Well, then you had the cars like the Chrysler 300. Those were full-size cars with big engines. What came before that? What came before that? So eventually you get back to the Stanley Steamers and the turn of the century stuff. And this was, of course, uh, one of the greats. As I said, the Roeblings built this and to celebrate their wonderful success, they went on a cruise, which sadly turned out to be the Titanic, and they died on the ship. And so someone else bought the company and it, it went to a more F-head design. This has... Uh, Ralph Findlay Porter designed this motor. It's a T-head, just a fantastic car. Nothing sounds like these. They're very quick. They're very fast. Uh, twin plugs, uh, the whole bit. I mean, this was a 100-mile-an-hour car in 1913. It seems impossible to imagine to be in that at, at 100 miles an hour, Jay. Oh, I'll take you out. I got mine. I'm, mine goes 100, so it's, it's fine. Jay, isn't it interesting? We, we look back in uh, in the Depression era and the 30s-styles cars where the 30s made good cars, or good cars in the 30s, but the rolling, sweeping fenders. Then we went shoebox square, and now we look at our era now in today's cars, where cars are going back streamlined and, and curved right, again. Right, right. Uh, well, don't forget the streamlining of the 30s really wasn't based on anything other than people's idea what streamlining was. You know, like people look at a Lamborghini Countach and think, wow, that thing must be really streamlined. But it's not. A Volkswagen Bug has more aerodynamics or better aerodynamics than a Countach. So mm. it isn't always visual. You know, mm. people complain that modern cars all look like jelly beans. Yep. Well, that's because jelly beans are almost the perfect shape. Yep. You know, the air and the rain and the wind comes over them, you know. Mm. When the Stanley brothers, when they broke their record in, in 1906, 127 miles an hour, what they used to do, they used fluid dynamics. They went to every canoe company they could find that built canoes. And they would pull each canoe through the water using one of those poles, that how many pounds of pressure it took to go through the water. And I think it was the Lakeview Canoe Company had the most aerodynamic, at least in terms of water. So they took two canoes, put one on top of the other, put the man inside with the engine, and set the record. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty neat. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Listening to that sort of history and where, where it all started. Well, in your opinion, why did the American cars, or in other countries as well, why did they go so rectangular and so square there for, for a couple of decades? Well, it, because I think square and rectangular is imposing. You know, you have a big radiator with a mascot on it. Look, oh, look at this car is so powerful, it can literally push the wind apart, you know. And, and don't forget, people traveled at 30 miles an hour. That was... In England, I think 20 miles an hour was the speed for a long time on a highway. Not They didn't have highways, but what you would call a highway today. And that was considered, oh, a nice cruising speed. So aerodynamics didn't really play a part of it. And when they started studying aerodynamics, you'll find that cars from the 30s had better aerodynamics than cars today because they didn't need downforce. They were going maybe a top speed of 70. You know, now you see the McLarens and I mean, with the big wing and the 800 pounds, 1,000 pounds of downforce pressure. Well, that, that, that works against you. You've got to have the aerodynamics with the downforce. You know, you lose the wing and you gain another 10, 50 miles an hour top speed. It's amazing, too, the evolution uh, brought about by the freeway systems as well under Eisenhower, like starting the bypass of Route 66 and putting in freeways around. Right, right. I mean, the world started moving at a quicker pace. Well, that's true, and that's why American cars, Americans preferred big, slow revving engines. You know, when the Japanese first came to America, for example, I don't know if you had Datsun in Australia, but they called it Datsun because Nissan was not sure about their cars because initially they sent some cars to America and they shook apart because they're going 70, 80 miles an hour. Nobody went that speed in Japan. There were no roads that went that fast. So they called their initial cars Datsun for fear that if it did fail terribly, it would not harm the Nissan name. And then once the Datsun was established in America, then they change it to Nissan. Mm. But, you know, just yeah. those kind of interesting little tidbits mm. there. Mm. Well, Jay, I'll let you get back around. Uh, right. Wonderful catching up with you. And um, down the track sometime, love to do an episode at your garage. Yeah, come by the garage. I don't want it there. No, come by the garage. That'd be fine. Yeah, no, come by. <laughs> be thrilled. Jay makes you feel really welcome. Well, that's right, he that's does. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Jay. Fletch, thank you very much, my friend. You're welcome. Thanks, buddy. I Cheers. Talk to you a bit. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, 
she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. In 2019, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2019 Detroit tour with Fletch. 1300 146 392. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. There is no doubt that this event is one of the only ones on earth that can offer the types of vehicles that turn up. How are you doing, Jim? Fletch, it's nice to see you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. This car behind us, I'm stuck for words already, and the interview has just started. A 1937 Cadillac, what can you tell us about it? Well, it's a very large car. It's, a, it's a 22 feet long, 16 cylinder, and it was, um, built by a young man in Switzerland, at least bought by him. It was, uh, the body is by Hartman. And, um, and so the, the, the car has uh, gone from a wonderful car to the, to the uh, car lots. Uh, it, it was a, a car that not many people took I interest in. And then a couple of people in the United States bought, brought it from Switzerland, did a few daddle do kind of uh, re restorations, um, and it we've we've we got the car in a museum where it's been for ten or fifteen years. We saw the uh, potential of the car, and, um, and we spent two and a half years restoring it. Um, it it's uh, it's just like it was built in 1937. Now, Jim, pardon my ignorance here, but in 1937, not every Cadillac look like this. How many of these were made? Oh, this is a one-off car. And, um, and only two chassis were, were ever brought into Europe, as far as we can tell, um, by anyone who wanted a Cadillac chassis. The other, the, we don't know what happened to the other chassis. Somebody said they might have made it into a truck because, as I said earlier, it's a 22 feet long car. Cadillac have always been renowned for trying to make a statement and they weren't called the flagship of America for nothing. 1937 to make an automobile like this in a difficult time we were talking the end of the depression era on the approach of the Second World War it was incredible their thinking to design a vehicle like this at the time. Yes well there was a lot of money in Switzerland in those days and this this young man was 25 years old when he uh, imported the uh, the chassis, had a had a fella nearby do the uh, do the design of the body. He wanted the biggest, baddest car that he could get a hold of because he was competing with with the other guys for uh, for the pretty girls, you know. Well, it would go without saying that there would be no competition with this type of car in that particular year. Exactly. On that note, what is it like to drive, Jim? It, it's like driving a truck, I have to be honest. It, it has a very, very uh, short turn radius. It is not a delightful car to drive, <laughs> but it's, it's beautiful to look at. Yet, sure. yet marketed as the epitome of luxury in its time. Yes. Well said. Thank you, Fletch.
right. On that note, Jim, thank you so much. It's been lovely meeting you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Uh, absolutely. And, and what an honour to, uh, to interview such a gentleman with a one-off Cadillac like this. Uh, I'm... Uh, as I said, stuck for words. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much. Well, when it comes to great American road cars, they didn't come much better than a Duesenberg. And we have a lovely story here. How are you, Roger? Good, Fletch. On this cool morning here near the ocean. <laughs> oh, I love these conditions. They're great to work in. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, very Pleasant, yes. A little chilly, but pleasant, Fletch. <laughs> uh, Roger, you're such a, a layback gentleman, and you've got such a, an incredible car. This, uh, this is amazing. 1937 Duesenberg. I cannot believe the condition. It has been restored to the utmost perfection. But what I like about this particular car, it has a unique story that goes with it. Would you like to share that with us? Well, my story with this car is... Uh, a strange coincidence or two, Fletch, but uh, going back to when I was a teenager uh, in Denver, Colorado, and I'm in a walking along in a residential area and parked on the street was this car when I was about 15 years old. I wasn't even old enough to drive legally. And you wouldn't have thought in your wildest dreams that all these decades later that you've ended up with that car. Uh, absolutely, I had no idea that that would ever take place. There were only about 300 Duesenbergs built. But uh, when I was a kid walking around this car, I realized there was a young man not too far away. He then approached me closer and he said, uh, uh, do you know what this car is? And I said, yes, it's a Duesenberg. Has 265 horsepower, and he bolted backwards. I thought he was going to maybe fall over backwards. <laughs> uh, I was concerned he could injure himself. But he said, I've driven this car various important places. And within the past few days, I drove it a thousand miles to get here. Almost never can anybody even identify the make of the car, let alone say 265 horsepower, which is correct, the most powerful American car of the day and long after. A car full of grandeur. It goes in the down in the history books as similar to a lot of other manufacturers. They didn't cease production because they weren't good enough. It was like Packard as well. I guess they priced themselves out of the market at that particular time. Of course, well, right. But, of course, Packard uh, had uh, developed lines of much less expensive yes. cars. Yes. But they never had a 265 horsepower Packard. <laughs> but the interior is, uh, it's just mind blowing. The dashboard looks fantastic. The Art Deco appearance of the dashboard with the instruments, it's incredible. Back when I first saw this car and had walked around it, the young man said, Would you like to sit in it? And he came and opened the door. And I sat in the front seat there studying the dashboard with all these instruments I'd never seen before. And I remember that very clearly. And it's been a few years. Roger, that's amazing. Look, we're out of time. I could talk to you all day. I just think it's a beautiful story that, that this guy as a teenager ended up with the car that he saw. And that was the first Duesenberg he'd ever seen as well. Roger, thank you for sharing that with us. Well, I'm happy to do so. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people, all sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. 
Martins Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems, finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martins Panel Masters, located at Fern Tree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. In 2019, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2019 Detroit tour with Fletch. 1300 146 392. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Hair and Forbes has the range. Making my way through the Concord de Elegance 2018 here at Pebble Beach, California. It's time now for John Tucker. How are you, John? I'm great, Fletch. How are you? Good, thank you. Now great we to see you. Yes, we go back a handful of years now. This gentleman is Preston Tucker's grandson from the famed car, the Tucker. So, uh, well, I'm. Uh, this is obviously a really proud day for Tucker. Twelve cars. The test chassis is here. Um, all a lot of my family is here, um, and and uh, we. We're just celebrating everything Tucker. I think it's an incredible story. The Jeff Bridges movie, uh, the the man and his automobile, Tucker. What a what a fantastic film! I think when that first came out, I was probably too young to appreciate it. It wasn't until later years. It's one of my favourite movies, and I know I've mentioned it on Classic Restos many many times. We've covered the Tucker on a few episodes, and uh, featuring at the AACA Museum at Hershey, and. Pebble Beach, it's 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 the big daddy. It's the grand final here. There's nothing else like it. Yeah. And, and I've never been to a Pebble Beach until today. So. Now, apart from the movie where all the cars were used, would it be true to say that uh, this collection here is uh, the next biggest? Um, probably yes. It, uh, there was 20 for the movie. There were 12 at a, or 11 at a convention in Las Vegas, right. and there's 12 here plus the test chassis, including the Tin Goose, which is the most important Tucker on the planet, yes. bar none. Yes. Okay, John, the Tucker behind us. Now, your sons have painstakingly done a fantastic restoration here. This is, this is incredible. This is quite a story, this car. Uh, two years ago, a friend of mine and I uh, dug this car out of a barn in Ohio, and uh, it was brown at the time, sort of a, a root beer brown, I call it. And um, took it back to Michigan, and he put it up for sale. And a fellow named Howard Kroplick bought it, and he came to my sons and said, "You know what? You guys are great at restoring cars, but you've never done a Tucker. So would you do a Tucker for me?" And he said, "Sure, we'll we'll give it a shot." So uh, ten months later, here's the car. This is a record restoration as far as time goes, but this is, in my opinion, I think I'm pretty well qualified to say this is definitely the best Tucker on the planet and I hope the judges agree. Okay John, so let's put the theory to rest here. So there's 51 Tuckers, does that mean 50 plus the prototype? Correct, 50 plus the prototype, so okay. the, the highest number is 50. And then there's a couple of uh, cars that were made afterward, yes. afterwards. So now are they are they all accounted for now? Because I remember some years ago there were a two or three that you you weren't too sure where they were. Well, we've accounted for every part of every car pretty much. Four were destroyed. Um, number 42 was destroyed, but it may exist up in Canada. There's no doubt about it. You're you're a powerful club, the the, the, the Tucker yeah. the Tucker Foundation. So if anyone's going to find number 42, it's going to be you guys. That's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and we're hot on the trail. That's for sure. Um, okay. Now, what have the guys done here with the car behind us, John? It started out as just a paint job, and um, then Pebble Beach called and said, because Ken Gross and, and uh, the, the people at Pebble Beach knew knew a little bit about Rob Ida, who's the, the guy they're working with, and he said, you're building a, the torpedo, so let's bring that to Pebble Beach if you get it done. Well, they that, that had to go backwards when this thing started out, and uh, they said, well, we're, we're going to bring that car, and, and they've never invited a car before it was done. Mm. 
far as seen, not seen. This car was finished literally four days ago. Well, hang on a second. That takes me back to the days of Preston, your grandfather. That's right. He, he sold the car because it was in the magazine. That's right. That's right. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> It's in your DNA, and you've carried on the tradition over the decades. Now, in, with your sons involved as well, it's so good, John, that you've, you've kept this dream alive. And um, if your grandfather was around now, he would just be so proud of that. I believe he would, and I'd be... Uh I think he's up there smiling down on us today. Once again, John's the type of guy that I could talk to for many, many hours, and uh, it's been a couple of years. It's so good to catch up with you again, John. Well, I'm glad you came over. I, I really appreciate you coming back over to see us again. That's all right. Man. First time here for Pebble Beach. It's one of these places. It, it is hard to describe. It it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing place. My mother actually lived in Carmel as a, as a child on the 17-mile drive, and yeah. she, she, uh, she had fond memories of it. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then my father lived here for years. Yeah. So the roots go back. The roots go back. Yeah. yeah. It's a good California connection. And most of the, the cousins that are here are from California and Arizona. Yeah. So that's amazing. We're all over. Good on you. All right, John. Again, thank you very much. Thanks, Fletch. You good to see you. Yourself. You too. And, all right. Uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, buddy. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. What a privilege to have this guy. How are you, Lee? Fletch, I'm fine. I'm really fine. I mean, it's great to be here with you. I feel like I've known you all my life. Well, there you go. It must be an absolute honor for you to be interviewed by Fletch. It is. I mean, I, it's, I've, I've waited for it all my life. I mean, I really. It's like, I was going to come to Australia, but Australia came to me with Fletch. So I'll, I'll just keep. I'll just keep coming back to see you. How's that sound? That sounds great. Now, you're known for Antiques Roadshow, the TV show. Um, now, you're a judge here at Pebble Beach. It's a very complicated process. Just run us through, what is a judge, what's the type of things that you look for, Lee? Well, uh, Fletch, I, I've been doing it for, for 15 years now, and I've, I'm honored to do it. It's, a, it's an honor, it's a privilege. And what we look for in the preservation class, and we have pre-war and post-war preservation class uh, judging is um, originality and 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 these cars are specifically entered because they're original and and that uh, goes for paint that goes for the the the, the uh, bodywork um, the carpets the interior the dashboard the engine so so there it, it can range from a race car which has been raced but raced honestly and maintained and a few parts replaced here and there to a car that's been kept in a garage but maintained and not a barn find that doesn't run but maintained that it has a thousand miles on it so there's quite a range of within the preservation class you know okay what i've learned is that getting something original in the patina that really means a lot today that's a they're only original ones, right? That's 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 my favorite expression. They're, they're only original ones. And I'm hearing that now more and more. Yes. I really am. And the, and the thing that is really, 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 incur uh, well, I'll say, the thing that's um, made that more and more important is the fact that original cars are now bringing more than restored cars. Yes. And, and the same model. There were there was a few years ago there was a there was a Gullwing Mercedes, yes. and in restored condition and one, literally a barn find. And the barn find brought about three hundred thousand dollars more than the restored example. On that note, Lee, it's been wonderful catching up with you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Flesh. That's all right. Appreciate it. We'll do it again one day, right? Yeah, let's do it soon. Well, there you have it. I hope you've really enjoyed this week's show. Just some of the amazing 2018 Concourse d'Elegance here at Pebble Beach, United States of America. In the meantime, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters.